Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I wanted to go through a brief review and key summary insights of the book The Source by Dr. Tara Swart. And I wanted to get my hands on this book as soon as I heard Tara speak on one of my favorite podcasts by Dr. Rangan Chatterjee called Feel Better, Live More. The book emphasizes the importance of our thoughts and how our mind can truly be the catalyst in helping us live our best lives possible. The first takeaway is that our mind is malleable and it reacts and grows based on what we feed it, literally based on the type of food that we eat or even based on the sleep that we give it, the people that we interact with. All these things really help our brain grow and it may be easy to think that once we reach a certain age or past a certain point in our development that our brain just stops growing and that's fixed but that's simply not true. Like the rest of our body, our brain is constantly growing and adopting based on the stimuli that it receives. So the first is that eating a healthy diet high in healthy fats as well as good cholesterol, HDL, can actually help your brain to reverse some of the damage that's already been done and also to help it live and prosper properly compared to eating junk foods because when we eat all these sugary processed foods, it really gives our brain a lot of brain fog and a lot of general confusion and slowness. But if we continue to give it the proper materials to make a good brain, then we'll lead a more alert life and in general increase in well-being. The second is that constantly exposing ourselves to the same behavior time and time again reinforces those habits which can either be good and bad. And most of the times it's our brain that's telling our body what to do and our body is kind of just going along with what our brain says. So for example, I used to only work out for 30 to 45 minutes a day because I thought that was my max. I thought I couldn't do any more because my brain would be like, no, 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 like 45 minutes is done, like stop now. But now I work out for 60 minutes per day. And initially, yes, my brain was screaming at me, but I knew that my body could handle it. And secondly, I have a really bad habit of checking my phone at the slightest accomplishment. So say I get you know, a video done, I'll check my phone. Say I write a paragraph, I'll check my phone. And this is a really bad habit because all these little, little breaks add up and slowly take away from your true focus and what you're trying to accomplish. The second takeaway is that it, it's important to think about situations through different lenses to help keep the brain agile. And these lenses are, emotionally, physically, logically, intuitively, motivationally, creatively, and logically. I hope I got them all. This is something I personally struggled with because I'm really good at separating my emotions from the facts of the situation. And the book is not saying to you let your emotions come into play and let your um, logic kind of influence your emotions. It's not saying to kind of mix everything up, but it's just simply telling you to consider situations through all these lenses so that you don't lose the ability to look at situations through these different ways. Two examples of this. So the first one, say you're trying to figure out which bank you should go with to provide the highest savings rate. There's really only a few lenses that you can look at this through. You're going to analyze every single bank that's available to you and what their savings rate is. And you're going to go with the one that provides the highest saving rates for the lowest cost because that's what matters to you. If you were to bring your emotions into it and look at, oh, which bank, which bank CEO do I like the most? Which bank's color scheme do I like the most? Which bank's user interface do I like the most? And if you try to bring in all these other different things, it can really muddy the decision of what you're trying to do, which is try to get the best savings rate. So in that case, you would only want to use logic and those more reason-based lenses. Whereas on the other hand, if you're trying to console somebody, a family member or a loved one, you're not going to kind of tell them the situation and be like, you know, this is just one day out of your entire life. It does this really matter? Why are you crying? Stop crying. Like that's very rude and not what you would do. So in that case, you'd kind of have to put your logic aside and kind of be more emotional and kind of be more physical with them and console them. So it really helps you to see different situations or different lessons, kind of apply which one is more appropriate. The third is that ruminating over past events or having a negative outlook kind of just wires our brain to have a constantly worried and stressed attitude about everything. If we expose ourselves to negativity and then have negative self-talk, this leads us to view the world as a very scary place. The perfect example of this is watching the news. When do they ever show good things on the news? It's always the latest death, the latest car crash, the latest pandemic, the latest this, the latest that. It's never anything good. And if you keep watching the news, you'll be like, wow, there's so many bad things going on in the world. Like, oh, is this a world even a good place to live? But that's not true at all because for all the million things, good things that happen, they show all the bad things conglomerated together. So obviously it's gonna paint the picture that, you know, the world is declining. Obviously, if you have this playing on the background in the TV, although you're not paying attention to it, that the negativity and the connotations slowly go into your brain. And now I'm not saying the world is all butterflies and rainbows, but it's really not that bad. And if we keep focusing on the bad, then that's all we'll see. Similarly, thinking about past events with the whole, oh my God, why did I do that? I was so dumb. I wish I could have done X, Y, and Z instead. Thinking of past events with that attitude really serves you no know, purpose as well, because what are you really gonna do? Sure, if that situation happens again in the future, you'll know how to act. And it's good that maybe you have that knowledge now of how you're gonna act in the future, but 
Unless you're really close to building a time machine or going back in time to fix that scenario, there's really, really no point thinking of how you could have reacted or responded or what you could have done differently. If things hadn't played out exactly like how they did back then, then you wouldn't be in this exact moment right now, which is just mind-blowing to me. And I'd rather be here accepting all those things that happened in the past rather than trying to change the past and not, and not being here where I am today. And the last concept is about visualization and practicing gratitude, which then wires our brain to look for opportunities and positivity in our everyday. So again, there's two things I want to touch on here. The first is vision boards, and I really didn't believe in vision boards. I thought they were just for celebrities and all these other people that were basically not me. But I decided to give it a go at the beginning of 2021, just why not? I printed out some nice pictures, which you can see back there. So I printed out a bunch of pictures that I wanted my future life or my life this year to kind of vibe with and what I wanted to bring into my life this year and I think it really does work because you're constantly seeing all these images especially if you put them in a space where you see it often so this is my, my bedroom this is where I work so I see it all the time and that subconsciously wires your brain to look for these things in your everyday real life so I think that it does help and if not there's just some nice pictures to provide you motivation with and the second is gratitude so I've been practicing gratitude for many many years now and I used to practice it in the format of I'm grateful for something happening today but I kind of shifted it to be grateful for the people and the things in my life rather than one particular highlight from that day. So before I go to bed, I kind of think about all the things I'm grateful for and I know that I am so full in my heart with everything that I have and what, what I have today that I know that even if tomorrow wasn't to happen, I know that today I'm so grateful for what I have and where I am. So some concluding thoughts, I think that our brain is so, so powerful and can do so much if we just feed it properly and literally feed it with the right foods, but also the proper self-care, the proper self-talk. I think there's so much that we can accomplish. There have been days where my brain just feels so, so foggy and I feel so slow and I can't think through anything and that's not how it should be at all. Our brains are amazing things that if we just harness them, we can truly, truly use them to create and then live our best lives possible. I'll leave you with a quote from none other than the great Buddha himself. All that we are is a result of our thoughts. It is founded in our thoughts and it is made up in our thoughts. Sending you lots of love and light and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!